Hey TCS TV viewers, it's Dave and Evelyn from the Camera Store, and today we're in Coney Island. And that's because Sony just announced two new APS-C sensor cameras, the A6100 and the A6600. Sony invited us out here to New York City so they could put these new APS-C sensor cameras in our hand. Right off the bat, we were a little surprised that they didn't do a resolution increase to these two cameras, but what they did do was put some really interesting technology into the lineup. Yeah, now the Sony A6000 was an incredibly popular camera for Sony. So popular. <laughs> it was crazy. So the 6100 is the next generation of that, and they've added one of my favorite features, the real-time autofocus tracking. Yeah, it's pretty amazing that it has real-time IAF as well as animal AF in both of these cameras. And the exciting thing about that is they're now putting this technology throughout their entire lineup. Both the 6100 and the 6600 shoot 4K video, and they both feature this articulating screen which we saw in the A6400, which I have a love-hate relationship with, and we'll talk about that in a bit too. The first thing that Dave and I noticed when we picked up the A6600 was that the grit felt a little bit larger. Now it still has the A6500's 5-axis in-body image stabilization, which made it have a little bit more of a bigger grip to fit everything in. Now the other exciting thing is they finally added a larger battery. It's now using the same battery from the full frame lineup, which is significantly better. And this camera is also better on processing power, and so Sony is promising an actual 230 31% better battery life and what that works out to is about 810 shots according to SEPA. What we're seeing today is that we've barely had to turn this camera off and it's doing a fantastic job of shooting photos and videos without going through the battery like crazy. If you're someone that recently bought an A6400, don't be too mad, you're still getting a lot of the same great technology. The real-time tracking autofocus for IF as well as animal detection, that's in the A6400. But as of right now, the A6600 is getting some of the features that were recently announced in the A7R Mark IV as well as the RX100 Mark VII, and that's real-time tracking in video. And this is really exciting because you're able to do the face detection while you're shooting video the viewfinder on the A6600 is 2.36 million dots. It's the same as the A6400, and that's not the best on the market, but it's certainly decent enough that you can see if your image is in focus and gives you a clear view. It's not gonna win any awards, but I think it's good enough for this level of camera. In terms of being able to capture fast action, the A6600 shoots at 11 frames per second, or eight if you're in silent shooting. And when you look at the buffer, we were able to get about 45 RAW plus JPEGs before the buffer started to slow down. And if you're just shooting JPEG, it starts to slow down when you get to about 85 shots. And during that about 10 seconds, when it takes to clear those 85 shots from the buffer, when that happens, you're still able to keep shooting. However, you're not able to go into your menu. And so you're kind of stuck waiting for that amount of time in order to make any changes. The A6600 is a really solid video camera option, and I think it's actually a better one over the A6400, primarily because we have this better battery life, as well as that in-body image stabilization, with the new feature of the headphone jack so you can monitor your audio. Now in terms of some of the other specs, in terms of 4K recording, you're still getting full sensor readout, and the color space is 420 8-bit internal or 422 8-bit external, and it's nice that Sony gives you the option of shooting either in 24p or 30p, and then you also have the slow-mo options, and you can actually shoot up to 120 frames per second in HD recording. I also really like some of the layout features in the feel of this camera, but one thing that I don't like is the placement of the record button for video. I find it to be in an awkward position and sometimes it's just kind of covered up by your thumb. However, if you don't like that, like I don't, you can actually program the shutter button to be your record button instead. So it just depends on your preferences. Now we came inside because it was raining, which brings us to a couple differences between the 6600 and the 6100. The 6100 is not a weather sealed camera. We also have some other big differences for me. One is the battery capacity. We give up that, it's the older battery. The extra, the electronic viewfinder isn't nearly as good. We don't have no S-Log file and we don't have eye autofocus tracking in video. But I don't think it really matters with this camera. We have the same 24 megapixel sensor that the 6600 has. We have the same real-time tracking autofocus that the 6600 has. 
I think this represents a fantastic value in the Sony lineup, and it really kind of gets you started in a very competent camera. We're on day two here in New York City with the 61 and 6600 camera from Sony. Now last night we had a chance to take a look at our files we shot at Coney Island and it's really no surprise there. We've seen this sensor before. It's their tried and true 24 megapixel sensor. Yeah, in terms of things like dynamic range, we're seeing the same results. However, in the A6600, they've actually improved some of the color rendering in the processor. And so I found that skin tones were a little bit better and just some of the overall sort of low light color seemed to be improved. Of course, for low light shooting, I took the 6600 to the Brooklyn Bridge with Ted Forbes and some friends, and I was pretty happy with the in-body image stabilization. I did not have a tripod with me, but I was able to get some pretty decent results, just handheld shooting, some longer exposures, and I think this is a really good camera if you're traveling around and you sometimes don't have a tripod. Yeah, I mean, I don't have the image stabilization in the 6100, so I had to get a little more creative with my stabilization techniques, but I was able to get some okay stuff out of it. Now, one difference that we did notice as well is that the 6600 does not have a pop-up flash. Yeah, to be fair though, <laughs> we complained when we reviewed the A6400 that it was kind of a useless feature because it's just this little mini pop-up flash. Wait for it. But the A6100 does still have it, and so if you're someone that really wants an extra little fill flash, you have it on the A6100. Another thing that I was kind of missing last night when I was shooting night photography in particular was having a front dial. Now, when I'm shooting with the full-frame A-series cameras, I love having that control, and I'm kind of surprised that now the flagship camera doesn't have that. They didn't add it in. Um, and with the larger grip, I feel like it could have accommodated that. Yeah, I, I agree 100%. But I mean, talking to the Sony people, I think that this camera system, it's still really designed for being kind of more of an entry level or beginner camera system for the most part. I mean, if you're like a soccer parent or someone shooting a lot of sports, Having real-time tracking autofocus in the A6100, pair that with a nice telephoto lens, and you have like the amazing soccer mom or soccer dad camera. Yeah, I mean, here is an entry-level camera that gives you this amazing autofocus system that is in their much higher level cameras. Yeah, not to mention the A6600 also has tracking in video with this 24 megapixel sensor. We've said it before, but you really get pretty bad rolling shutter with the sensor if you're shooting video. And so you just gotta watch that if you're shooting more movement from side to side and doing panning. Sony's doing an excellent job in their full frame market. Introduction of the camera, the A7R Mark IV with its 61 megapixel full frame sensor, it's amazing. But I'd like to see some new technology and a new sensor get put into the APS-C sensors. Yeah, it seems like they're, they're really dominating, especially when it comes to autofocus performance. And now, of course, we're seeing it all the way from the compact lineup, all the way to full frame and APS-C in between. But it is kind of disappointing that they haven't updated that sensor, not to mention a couple other little features. The, the card slot, it's still an older SD card slot. And of course, on their flagship model, it is, it is a single card slot too. Yeah, now something that I wish they had was actually USB-C connectivity. I know it has micro USB and you love it because <laughs> you have a whole drawer full of micro USB have, cables. Yeah, I have a lot of micro <laughs> USB cables. I've had them for a lot of my phones and stuff. And so I was kind of doling them out, helping everybody charge up their cameras. Um, but yeah, it would be nice to update that port. Yeah, now I wish they would have updated the screen as well. I mentioned earlier, I love hate with this. I do love that it's articulating for the most part, doing low angle shots or high angle shots, it's great. But when I want to vlog, because I'm very popular on the vlogging network here, you know, like, uh, what if I want to put on a microphone? I'm still screwed this way. I'm not gonna be able to see what the screen is showing if I put a microphone on here. That's my biggest complaint here. So on this case, I really still like the articulating screen that flips off to the side. Sony has finally come to the table with some new APS-C sensor format lenses. So yep. they put two really nice ones in our hands. Yeah, the, my favorite is the new 16 to 55 constant 2.8 aperture lens. Uh, this is your uh, significant upgrade to the 16 to 50 lens that you get in a lot of the kits. So all the images that you saw shot with us today were shot with these two lenses. Yes, we also got a chance to shoot with the 70 to 350 millimeter lens. It's f 4.5 to 6.3. When good glass is paired with these APS-C sensor cameras, you can get really, really nice results. With the release of the 6100 and the 6600, plus these two new exciting lenses, Sony has really flushed out their APS-C lineup of cameras and lenses. They really have, and it's 
amazing that they finally released these two lenses. And so what we really want to know is what are you guys most excited about? Is it the lenses or is it these two new cameras? We have the entry level A6100 that has real-time tracking autofocus and a fairly entry-level priced camera. Or is it the flagship A6600 that has real-time tracking both photo and video. And a bigger battery. And a bigger battery. <laughs> that is a huge difference. And so let us know by commenting below. Make sure you follow us on Instagram. And if you're new to our channel, please subscribe and hit that notification bell so we can catch you again very soon.